The night beat starts right now. So who was driving? Not me. Not you. No. Nope. Who was? And what kind of bum friend do you have that would leave you lying in your backyard? New on the night beat, a closer look at that body cam footage. We brought you late breaking on the six o'clock news. It shows Councilman Clayton Perry lying in the backyard of his home the night he was allegedly involved in a hit and run accident. Perry turned himself into authorities this afternoon and within hours, San Antonio police released footage connected to his arrest. Dylan Collier breaks down the criminal allegations and also what's next for the embattled public official. Councilman Perry, are you going to resign? After four days out of the public eye, District 10 City Councilman Clayton Perry resurfaced at 4 p.m. in the basement of the Bear County Courthouse, booked on a misdemeanor failure to provide information charge tied to Sunday night's hit and run. Perry saying after his release, he'll reassess some things in his life. Do you have a drinking problem? Uh, no, I don't think so. But again, that's something that I'm going to be reevaluating um, in, in my entire life. Yeah. Less than two hours after saying that, San Antonio police released this. Can you sit up? No. Do you want help sitting up? No. Well, I can't exactly leave you like this. During the uncomfortable 13-minute clip, Perry appears disheveled with a visible gash on his head, refusing to admit that he was behind the wheel. I had a good time. Where? From... <laughs> Charging paperwork claims minutes before Perry collided head-on into a Honda Civic, he was slurring his speech and causing a disturbance in the drive through of this Bill Miller barbecue, the restaurant less than a mile and a half away from the crash scene. Perry says he's not stepping down. I've got a job to do, and yes, I'm going to be going back to city council. i got to represent my uh, neighbors in District 10. Councilman Perry would not say when or even if he plans to return to his city council meetings. Reporting outside the Bear County Courthouse, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. And as all that was playing out on the very same day, San Antonio City Council publicly rebuking one of its own. It passed a resolution to censor and issue a no confidence vote to Councilman Mario Bravo. This was the result of an independent investigation into a confrontation he had with fellow council member Anna Sandoval. It happened just before a budget vote where he presented a plan for CPS energy money that ultimately failed. Today's vote doesn't really come with any actual consequences for Bravo, but is more of a united show of disapproval. That is the city attorney. Bravo is not barred from the council, and while the mayor had previously suspended him from his committee assignments, a spokesman said there was no decision yet on what to do about them going forward. New tonight at 10, 33 people detained after the Bear County Sheriff's Office busted two different gambling joints on the far south side. This happened just before 730 in the 100 block of Esma. That's not far from South Presa off of Loop 410. One place had 40 machines. 18 people there were detained. The other had 18 machines. Sheriff Javier Salazar says that gambling wasn't the only illegal thing going on there. He says that deputies also found stolen vehicles, weapons, and also a known gang member who was there. This one right here is, of course, right here by the Catholic Archdiocese. So it, I, I can't even say that they're trying very hard to hide what they're doing from, from folks. Um, but as we all know that when you've got uh, a, a, an organized crime group conducting business like this, it, it certainly could turn violent at any given time. Sheriff Salazar says that right now the people who work there are facing charges for running or promoting a gambling place. He says that they could also get charged with organized crime because he thinks that both places are part of the same operation. And as for the patrons who were there, Salazar says they got fined. Police need your help in tracking down a burglar accused of taking tablets, a printer, cash, and the cash register from a New Braunfels business. It happened at the Seven Monks Cafe on Seguin Avenue in New Braunfels Tuesday morning between 2.50 and 3.15 a.m. The entire burglary caught on this surveillance video.
The business owner suspects the thief broke in through the back door. I was shocked that somebody would just kind of come in. We're a really small business. We're really close in community. This is how you can help. Take a close look at the suspect. If you have any details to help in this investigation, call Crime Stoppers 830-620-8477. Another day this week with temperatures well above average, making it up to 83. The average high 73. Big changes coming in the middle of the day tomorrow. You're going to wake up to temperatures mostly in the mid 60s, 66 around San Antonio. A few degrees lower up into the hill country. Bandera, for example, about 62 for the morning temperature. And the cold front's going to hit around noon. It's going to have a big impact on our temperatures, not just tomorrow, but even in the days ahead. Look at our morning reading on Saturday. We'll be down to 42. Sunday, 40 degrees in the morning with a freeze possible in the hill country. That would be on Sunday morning. We're going to be back to talk more about the timing of that cold front, the rain, how much we'll see, the timing of the showers and thunderstorms, of course, the wind that's going to pick up and how the temperatures will be shifting throughout the day in just a bit. Thank you. And now for a look at today's big headlines in your night beat news flash strangers jumping in to help first responders get two people out of a fiery crash overnight. But unfortunately, they didn't make it in time. That crash happened around one this morning on Loop 410 and Highway 151. Police say the female passenger was dead when they pulled her out of that car. The male driver later died at the hospital. Police believe that he was speeding and lost control. New tonight, San Antonio police trying to pinpoint a suspect in a shooting this afternoon. It happened just before four when officers arrived in the 800 block of Mulberry, just north of downtown. They found a man shot in the elbow. He was sent to the hospital. He's expected to be OK. Police say that witnesses are giving them conflicting information. So right now they're looking through surveillance video to identify the suspect. On Tuesday, we saw a blue wave actually take over the judicial side of Bear County. Not only did the district attorney's office stay Democratic, it also gained six judicial seats from Republicans. Now, two Bear County courts, one civil district court, and three criminal district courts turned Democrat. It's a trend that we've seen in both 2018 and 2020. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. A Texas man takes on the federal government on behalf of veterans and wins. Now, thanks to his fight, the VA pays for organ transplant treatment for veterans and keeps them in their own communities. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how the local University Health Transplant Institute and the Audie Murphy VA Hospital led the charge in a policy change that will save lives across our nation. The traveling is really hard. You're already sick enough as it is. In 2016, when Charles Nelson needed a second kidney transplant, he knew the long recovery ahead of him and his living donor. He asked the VA to use the Veterans Choice Program to stay close to home. Let me go the across donor. the street. So it was it's very hard when you have to travel when you're sick. But red tape in the Veterans Choice Program denied his living donor his son coverage, leaving them frustrated and at a loss of what to do next. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. It's, you know, the bureaucracy of a federal government agency, and it was just uh, disappointing. Through other means, he was able to fund the cost to cover the care for his donor. Average costs range from seventy to $100,000, but the experience sparked a movement to expose the flaws in a system that's supposed to cover veterans and their donors. Don't think that the government's too big that you can't raise your voice and Amen. say, hey, <laughs> you know, there's something wrong here. In July of 2022, the VA changed its policy to include coverage costs for living donors. The restrictions on it are loosened up a little bit or eased up and not completely to where we want it, but it is still making progress. The entire country and certainly our transplant center owes them a tremendous thank you. University Health Transplant Institute and the Audie Murphy VA Hospital were behind the Nelsons in their journey to fix the system. Why it's so critical that they pass the living donation component of this is the access to care. It's the chance that you'll have a normal life as soon as possible. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Now, since the policy change in July, University Health Transplant Institute Center already working with a living donor and veteran for a transplant. Let's stay on the topic of veterans now and those who have health problems after serving in the war against terrorism now have less hurdles to get over to get help from the VA. On the eve of Veterans Day and the birthday of the Marine Corps, we held a town hall tonight to get suffering veterans help. 
The PACT Act was recently passed by Congress and signed into law. It makes it easier for those exposed to toxic burn pits, Agent Orange and other environmental toxins during their military service to get help. In tonight's live stream, we talked about how to get started, where to turn and why we are talking about millions of soldiers who were exposed and may not feel the health effects till late till years later. 3.5 million soldiers may have been exposed in the fight against terrorism alone. The scary numbers of it all is there's about a quarter of a million of those that are already dead. My dear friends, my my CO's dead, my XO's dead, my best friend Frank Hazelwood's dead. Um, and you know that's just just in one you know one company. Tim Jensen, a retired Marine and co-founder of San Antonio's Grunt Style, he helped get the new act put into action. We talked about navigating the Veterans Administration and how to find out the benefits that are out there. The Spreester Session Town Hall, it's called Burn Pit Help. It's on KSAT.com and our KSAT YouTube channel as well. And just ahead on the night beat, it's a prestigious award, especially for college students. Coming up, how the University of Incarnate Word is paving the way for young journalists. Plus, the San Antonio man's legacy as an organ donor now getting national recognition. Still ahead, the unique celebration in his memory and how it's going to honor his gift of life. One young man's dreams cut short when he was hit and killed by a wrong way driver who was running from police. It happened in 2020. Two years after his death, he still accomplished his goal of helping others by being an organ donor. 20 year old Asante Contreras. His tissue donations have already gone to create 95 grafts for those in need. For all he's given back, Contreras and 43 other donors from across the U.S. will be honored ahead of college football's esteemed Rose Bowl on January 2nd. Today, family and friends put the finishing touches on a florograph of a picture of Contreras, which will be sent to Pasadena, California, and placed on the Donate Life Rose Parade float. Because it's for a good cause. It's helping people. And that's that was so important to him. So he would like that. He would be thrilled. And the two years without him, sometimes it seems like he's been gone forever, and sometimes it's like it was yesterday. It's his legacy. Contreras' mother says that her son was studying to be an ER physician while working as an EMT with the Castroville Fire Department. He was killed just one day before taking his final exam for the paramedic certificate program at UT Health San Antonio. Other news now from writing history to making it. Journalism students at the University of the Incarnate Word are doing just that. They've been nominated for 15 Lone Star Emmys. Wow. Way to go. That is a new record for the program. The night team's Alyssa Cole spoke to students about their passion for storytelling. Three, two, one, six open. They are future journalists in the making. If we didn't have journalism or factual storytelling, we would probably be left in the dark a lot of the time. And they run this entire newsroom. We love what we do and we love what we produce at the end of the day as, as a whole. Stand by the camera too. Nominee Gabrielle Yanez is being recognized for impactful hard news storytelling. Well, the story was based on a true story, one of my friends that passed away in a drunk driving accident. So I spoke with her sister and we decided to create this video to kind of get the message out um, against drunk driving. Part of the student's success, the ability to mimic professional television stations. Chavez is a film director who produced the documentary. We also purchased a live view um, remote broadcasting unit that allows students the opportunity to go out into the community and do a live shot. Another nominee attributes live broadcasting and field reporting to their record sweeping nominations. And it's important that when we're telling stories that we're being as accurate as possible and that we're attributing things and things people have said to the right people. For these students, their enthusiasm goes beyond awards. So even if we have, didn't win any Emmys, we'd still be here doing it every day because it's still something we're passionate about. Friday morning, the Lone Star Emmy chapter will announce the award winners. Alyssa Cole, UIW TV will be right back. Case at 12 News. Wow, they certainly have a future. Way to go, UIW yes. Cardinals. Congratulations to them. We Very can't wait to see what else they're going to do. Yeah, absolutely. All right, 73 degrees out there right now, and this isn't even going to be our high temperature this weekend. Oh, we're not even going to come close.
Oh. So the answer is no. Short answer, no. I'm glad to see you made it back from Worst Fest. I was worried you were going to get, you know, sucked into bogged it. Bogged down with uh, <laughs> polka and sausage. You know, they did. Uh, the, I was there on Sunday and the band did finish with Who Stole the Kishka. I mean, best song ever. Of course they did. They did. It was great. Oh, <laughs> smiles all around. By the way, Yashal, he stole the Kishka. You got to know the song. Okay. I was, I was, yeah, it was a cliffhanger. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our rain chances for tomorrow. And this will really sum it up perfectly. In the morning, well, not much rain, but you get into the midday and afternoon. Look at that, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's our main time frame for rain around San Antonio. Once we get into the evening past sunset, rain chances really fall off around town. So let's get right to our future cast. We've got the cold front headed our way. It's not going to make it here until noon tomorrow. So before noon, that's when the shower and thunderstorm activity will be up in the hill country. Edwards Plateau. This is 10 a.m. We just have low clouds around San Antonio. Parts of the hill country have seen some uh, showers and storms. Noon, that's when the cold front moves into town and should activate some storms in and around San Antonio. Noon, one, two, three o'clock. So basically through the early afternoon is when we're most likely to see that action in and around town. Morning commute will be just fine. Evening commute, we could have a few lingering showers and thunderstorms left over. And keep in mind, there is the off chance of a rogue strong to severe storm during the main part of this from about noon to about four o'clock here in San Antonio. Notice three o'clock, the heaviest action is east. We're talking Gonzales County, Wilson, Carnes counties, even DeWitt County, because that's where the cold front is going. But even behind the front, a few sprints, spritzes and sprinkles possible here and there through sunset. But again, the bulk of it from about noon to 4 p.m. So Friday, 9 a.m., cloudy, humid, temperatures in the 70s. By noon, scattered storms developing around town. Temperatures are going to sharply drop around the noon hour. By 5 p.m., still scattered rain, windy, and temperatures down in the 50s at that point. So let's talk about the front. It's in Texas now. We've got 70s locally here, but you go off to the north, 43 in Amarillo, and you go up the plains behind the front, and we're down in the teens and 20s in the core of this cold air, even some single digits in Montana. So our trend tomorrow, it's going to start warm, 68 at 8 a.m. By noon, we're at 74, and then 2 o'clock, we're down into the upper 50s at 58. 8 o'clock, 49 degrees. So Friday night football planned for gusty conditions and temperatures really falling down into the upper 50s. And this cool air is going to hang around. I mean, you look at the high temperatures this weekend, for the most part, right near 60 degrees. Saturday at 60, Sunday upper 50s. The warmest will be is Monday, and that's 63 degrees. So this is cool air. It's going to stick around. Get ready for the gusty winds tomorrow up to about 35 miles per hour at times behind that front. And still pretty gusty on Saturday. Another round of showers possible on Monday. 40% chance there. Man, big time change. Nobody's more excited about this than our very own Greg <laughs> Simmons, who's going to be covering <laughs> big game coverage tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge for everybody, including those of us actually covering the games. But nonetheless, the games will go on as they started tonight, in fact, or with our big game playoff coverage the first week of the postseason. We'll let you know who is moving on. And the Spurs let us take a sneak peek at their new Fiesta City theme uniforms coming up. Number 11, Johnson, second quarter of the Knights with a 10-3 lead. Then we'll add to that. Quarterback Chad Warner takes a snap, pump fakes, and fires deep to the wide open Royal Capel on the 34-yard strike. That was 17-3 steal. The final from Linnell, 34-17 steals moving on. The Churchill Chargers renewing their rivalry with the Justin Rockets in the first round of the playoffs tonight. First quarter, Rockets down 3-0, but about to blast off. Justin on the Churchill 23, quarterback Elijah Favala, play action pass, steps up in the pocket and finds Anthony Evans on the far sideline and sprints to the end zone. Looks like he gets in, but they call him down to the one, so the Rockets cap off that drive, and Nathaniel Stanley runs it in from there. They miss the extra point, 6-3 Judson. The final from Rutledge, 42-5 Judson. Over at Alamo Stadium, YMLA hosting Wimberley in the first round of the Class 4A postseason. First quarter, Lions kicking off after conceding his safety. Caden Heatley feels the ball around the 43-yard line, takes off right up the middle and weaves his way through traffic for the 57-yard kickoff return touchdown. Extra point was good, 23-0 lead. The final from the Rockpile, 81-0 Wimberley. The stands are packed in Italian 
to see Sabanon Pettis open the playoffs in Class 2A Division II. Yellow Jackets lead 28 to nothing in the second quarter. When we arrive, Sabanon quarterback Richard Gonzalez keeps it on the option, races around the corner to get to the sideline. He's going to get knocked out about the two, but not before picking up 25. The Yellow Jackets cap off that drive. Right here, Israel Gonzalez goes right up the middle for the score, 35 to nothing. Let's see if they're being able to stay undefeated, and they do, 43 to nothing, Sabanon. Here come the Bandera Bulldogs, ready to take on Lago Vista, Warrior Coliseum, of Piper High School for the Class 4A by district round. Vikings strike first on their first offensive possession. Ethan Helton gets the handoff on the jet sweep. Coming right at you, blows by one defender, runs over another. The goal line for the 32-yard touchdown. They go for two, convert for the 8-0 lead. The final from the Coliseum, 67-6 Lago Vista. The Pearsall Mavericks made a trip to San Antonio to face Navarro. First quarter, the Panthers pounce. Running back Antoine Mabain takes a handoff, follows his blockers, turns the corner, and picks up 20 yards before getting pushed out of bounds. A little later, Navarro on the two-yard line. They give it to Cohen Blunt, who muscles his way in for the touchdown. 6-0 Panthers after the missed extra point. The final from Ferris, 50-8 Navarro. The Jordan Indians hosting their first-round playoff game against Luling tonight. First quarter, the Indians inside the Luling five-yard line. Quarterback Matthew Hicks takes a snap, gets flushed out of the pocket, decides to run it in, leaves into the end zone, gets flipped, but managed to hold on the ball right there for the score. 7-0 Jordan. The final 28-0 Jordan. The Flintonia Bulldogs mascot welcoming us to Davenport Stadium as they take on the Junction Eagles. Bulldogs take control early. Second play of the game. Quarterback Fidel Venegas keeps it on the option. Follows his blockers. Sprints down the near side. 54 yards untouched of the house. 6 0 Flatonian. After missing the extra point, Bulldogs not done. Next possession. Play action pass from Venegas to Dayton Cliff for the 30 yard. Pitch and catch, 12-0 Bulldogs in less than one minute to play. The final from Davenport. Latonia advances, 59-32. Blanco Panther fans packing Hero Stadium to see them take on Poteet at their neutral site. Second quarter, the Panthers lead 7-0. Want more? Quarterback Cameron Anderson on the option read. Looks like he hands it off, but he didn't. He flies down the field on his way to the 82-yard touchdown. 14-0 Blanco. Let's go to the big game cover scoreboard for that final and many more. As you can see right there, Blanco over Poteet, 41-14. There's a final 42-13. Bernie stays undefeated. And number one in sub 5 8 12s top 12. Shiner over Santa Maria, 54-14. Gerald with a win over Divine, 32-14. And how about Corpus Christi Miller over South Southwest Legacy, 70 to 34. Medina Valley falls to Veterans Memorial out of Corpus Christi, 70 to 14. How about Catula falling to Lano, 44 to nothing. Holland over Stockdale, 36 31, knocking out another local area team. Thorndale over Johnson City, 41 to 30. And Fall City gets by Bremen, 40 to 36. And don't forget tomorrow night, live right here on KSAT 12, New Braunfels Unicorns take on the Reagan Rattlers. Kick off at just after 7 at 7.08, but our pregame show starts at 6.30. And the Spurs are nice enough to model their new Fiesta City themed uniforms next. Spurs held practice today after dropping a heartbreaker to the Grizzlies in overtime last night. Immediately following practice, the Spurs sported their new Fiesta themed uniforms that will debut tomorrow night on the court when the Spurs host the Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow evening. Starting point guard Trey Jones, nice enough to model the new uniforms for us today at Shoot Around. And a first in franchise history dating back to the old Fiesta theme warm ups to match the court. These uniforms will be also worn on the 50th anniversary game on January the 13th in the Alamo Dome on the Fiesta theme court. I mean, check it out. I mean, it looked it look great. I, I, I love it. I like the look. I feel like it's real colorful, and I'm a real colorful person. I'm an expressive person, so this is like right up my alley. I feel like that. Uh, I like how they took like the All Star, the All Star game theme, and kind of spin it and made it our own. I, I love the colors. I feel like it, it's great. All right, you get to see them all dressed up just like that tomorrow night when they play host the Milwaukee Bucks. And there is a report out there that we may not see Giannis Antetokounmpo in this game. He missed the last game with an injured ankle, so we'll see if he's able to make an appearance tomorrow at seven o'clock at the AT and T Center. All right, thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back in two minutes. Warm tomorrow morning, cool tomorrow afternoon. We'll go from the 70s down into the 50s throughout the day. Windy, some scattered showers and storms, especially about noon to 4 p.m. Remaining cool then thereafter. Just whip out your jackets. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that Good Morning San Antonio starts at 4.30. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.